Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Oh, we got another beached whale special today. 2010 Chevy Cobalt 2.2. Interesting story with this one. It was running great, absolutely no problems. The owner was doing some rust repair welding on the underside of the vehicle. And, well, he said that he was doing the welding under here. And apparently the floor pan got so hot that a whole bunch of wires in this harness caught on fire. <laughs> That's pretty nuts. So you can see a whole bunch of wiring repairs. And after that the vehicle never never ran, never cranked. Um, took it to a shop. They said we have to redo the wiring repairs. They did that, still no crank. Then they said, hey, your engine computer is offline, you need a new engine computer, replace that. Still nothing. Hey, hey your BCM is offline or something. I don't know. They replaced the BCM. You can see parts in the passenger footwell. There's the engine computer. There's the BCM. So, got the key on. This can't even read the VIN. So the ECM is likely offline. So let me manually put in the VIN. We'll do a full health report, see which modules are online. Um, I mean, if this caused the uh, the problem here, this fire of wires, it wasn't an electrical like the you know welding current going through a module cooking it. Even though you know that's always a possibility. In this case, I think it was just wires catching on fire, shorting together. Some, uh, he said at least one 50 amp fuse blue. Okay, <clears throat> um, but that's all the information that I have. So let's do a full health report and see what's talking. All right, here we go. There's the VIN. Uh, it's automatic. And when I turned the key on, I did hear the fuel pump prime, which is a good sign. It means the engine computer is alive. Um, so we do not have JL4. Actually, let me double check that. The, uh... RPO sticker on these is in the back. Right here. So I do not see a DEF... JM4, not JL4. So it has ABS, but not the Stabil track. So without and Smart Scan, see what comes up. All right, so some modules are online. This remote panel cluster, remote control door lock receiver. Um, this is airbag stuff, radio, VCIM. Interesting. But ECM, TCM, EBCM are all offline. So, and the BCM too. Looks like all the high speed stuff, which I printed off this diagram, it's all offline. There's our DLC. So right off the bat, I want to do some checks with Mr. Bob, breakout box. Um, we can start with the voltmeter, no need to get a scope out just yet see what the voltages are in pins 6 and 14 and go from there. All right, got the meter out, 13.4 volts. That's because I have the uh, Tornado 90,000 battery charger on here. It's putting out 24 amps. So for the cases like this, that is very, very useful to have. And also the customer said the battery's been dying you know, he charges it up, puts it in the vehicle, like a day later it's dead. So there's also a parasitic draw. <clears throat> uh, let's, um, so the meter's good. We know we have good powers and grounds at the DLC. Now let's move our test lead to pin six. And we're basically at zero volts. Okay, and then pin 14. We're basically at zero volts, so is this network shorted to ground? We expect two and a half volt bias on there. Really simple check. Take a test light 
from battery positive, now this is I don't know, 300 milliamps, and make sure the test light works. It does, just connected it to ground. Now let's connect it to pin 14. So test light lights up, it's a little dim, and we can see we have 1.2 volts on there. So that current right now, somewhere in this network tree, let's say we're feeding 12 volts into pin 14, and somehow it's making it to ground, and only elevates this voltage by like one volt. It's not a direct short to ground, but it's pretty close. Let's try the other, you know, pin six. So basically we can put the whole lead into pin six. 1.26. Same brightness of the test light. So do we have a short to ground on this network? It sure seems like it. On both, on both wires, mind you. Um, what's the easiest thing to do here? Well, we know the location of the damage was right here. And do we have any network wires coming through this harness? So I looked again on locations and all these modules, for example, power steering control, body control module, there's the ECM, the TCM, the EBCM, that's under the hood, all these. This is, you know, dash or under the car, except for this vehicle communications interface module. That actually lives on this parcel shelf in the trunk, somewhere like right here. And we're looking for a twisted pair of tan and tan black wires. Well, sure enough, on the seat, under the seat, we have twisted pairs of tan and tan black wires. And you can see this, this pair right here got melted, tan, tan black. Now they are spliced correctly. So that's going to and coming back from the VICM. I'm wondering, can we, you know, before we cut anything or splice anything, can we measure that current on one of these wires? See if it's going back to that module or if it's coming here and shorting, you know, shorting out or something. It has to be a short to ground. So let's, uh, let's get out the amp clamp. All right, so I got the amp clamp on there. It didn't re-zero it. It's showing 0 0.95 amps. Just around one pair of the wires. I don't know which one it is. Just a quick experiment. Now I'm gonna unplug my test light and we'll see if this amper changes. Ready? Down to 0 0.6 and plug it back in. 0 0.9, almost one amp. Awesome. So we're on the right track. The current is going back towards the VCIM on this bundle of wires. Because it's a positive, I mean, we can re-zero it. And let's see, if we, if we put it on pin six, yep, there it is, 0.3 amps. If we put it on pin 14, same, 0.3 amps. Okay. What about these wires coming back? Let's see. So re zero. Okay. Plug in the test light. 0.36. Now it's minus. And on pin six. Minus 0.38. Okay, so it's going, the current's going in on those, that pair of wires, coming back on this pair of wires. Now, can we say exactly which one? Well, let's put the amp clamp just around the tan, not the tan black. Okay. Let's see. Minus 0.2. 
Aha. So now on pin 14, it says, you know, minus 0.2 amps. On pin 6, that almost doesn't change. So, and then pin 14 is the tan wire. So let's go to the tan and black. Now I expect on pin 6, yep, there's our minus 0.3, then pin 14, it won't be a difference. So it looks like current is going on both of these wires to the um, VCIM and coming back on this pair of wires from the VCIM. So it sure looks to me like the VCIM got cooked by the fire or the transceiver in there. And those wires are just shorted in that module. Now, can we easily fix this? I mean, I'm sure the guy can live without OnStar. Can we just say, hey, you know, cut this, cut this, and then splice it over to here and um, eliminate this? So basically make it like it did not have VCIM. We could go into the trunk and find this module, unplug it, and then jump these two terminals together. That's another option, but, you know. You know, whatever, whatever the customer wants. I'm sure he just wants his car back on the road. So let's, um, we have to restore this network. And since these wires are already spliced and re-spliced, I don't think cutting them will be that bad of an idea. And by the way, if the VCIM is cooked and it's shorting out the can, what's the possibility that it's also doing the parasitic draw? I say it's pretty likely, but we're going to do quick and dirty here. So you can see here is a little not very nice spot. I'm just going to cut this pair of wires. And what do we want to look at on our... Um, on our bob. Well, we can plug in the short. We'll see if that goes away. And also, before we do that, I'll show you the resistance on pin 6 and 14. Now again, the computer is on, the key is on, so um, this is not a valid reading unless the battery is disconnected. So, don't get too excited about that. But I'm just going to leave my test light in here. And as soon as I cut these wires, I predict the test light will go out and our voltage will go up to, you know, battery voltage on the test light. So here we go. Ready? Oh, that was anticlimactic. I didn't have my cutters on there. One, two, three. Snip. Hypothesis was spot on. So now, I also want to cut these wires right here. You know, before this, all this repair stuff. And we'll just splice the Tan, tan black together and the uh, brown and brown just temporarily and we'll see if our network is restored. Okay now let's cut these guys here. Now strip strip these back. I'm wondering if all the other modules survived. I assume they did. Okay. So now we have that. Get this out of here. 
Let's just tie these two together. So tan black and tan black. Maybe I should have stripped them a little, a little further. Then the uh, tan and tan here. So you want to do a good job of this for reliable testing. Okay, I'm happy with that. Uh oh, our test light's back on. We're at 1.1 volts. <sighs> Let's see, did I just goof up? Hmm. Interesting. So, we basically eliminated this, ran it like this, and now we still have the same symptoms of the network being shorted together. Let's go to the EBCM. ABS module which lives right here. Let's unplug that. See if our short goes away. Okay. Yes, our short did go away. So short is either in the EBCM or further downstream. There's the TCM, then there's the ECM. Let's see how hard the TCM is to get to. Oh, I'm not sure if the transmission controller is inside the transmission. Or not, we can look that up. ECM is right here. Okay. Oh, and I guess the TCM is right up here. Oh, perfect. So let's plug the EBCM back in. Our short should have returned. Yep, it sure did. There's our test light. Now let's unplug the TCM. Short is still there. Aha! Uh -huh. Very cool. So it looks like the EBCM is shorting those two pins together, or the two legs of the network, and shorting it to ground. So basically, now what we can do is unplug this guy. Plug this back in and simply jump the network pins on this connector together and they're easy, they're labeled 1 through 13, 6 or 14 through 26. Let's look up on the diagram which pins those are. So tan black goes from, we have JM4, 24 to 23, 
and then tan goes from 22 to 21. Perfect. So let me get some jumpers, install those, and then we'll uh, we'll see if the network comes back to life. All right. So here's the jumper setup. See, I'm just using my multimeter leads, and see yellow to yellow. That's pins. 22 and 23 jump together and with the black lead I have uh, pins let's see with the yellow lead 22 21 and 22 the black lead 23 and 24 so that's on look we have 13.4 volts we're not short at the ground so now let's take the uh, test light off of there look we have 0.6 volts let's turn the key on about 1.5. Let's plug the scanner back in. So basically back out. Do another smart scan. See if anything is talking. Hey, engine computer's back online. TCM is offline. BCM is back online. That's good news. Will this car actually start and crank? Well, it's it's got the anti-theft, so it cranks. <laughs> so one thing we know for sure right now is the uh, EBCM is cooked. It was shorting the can wires to ground. Now, are we done? No way. Why is the TCM offline? I don't know. Um, engine computer is eBay, so we're not sure if that works or not. We can plug in the old one. We have the security light on. Let's just read all the trouble codes here. All right, so. ECM says map sensor circuit high, crankshaft position system not learned, ignition switch, ignition one switch circuit two, last come with transmission control module. <clears throat> BCM says, oh, lots of good stuff. So let's just delete, clear all DTCs. There could be blown fuses. The BCM's not original, so who knows? The cars like this take a very systematic approach, and then you find one problem, you restore something, take notes, what's the next problem? And you just kind of chip away at it. So uh, the test with the VCIM, uh, that was a little misleading because the current was going to the VCIM and coming back on those network wires because the EBCM is shorting it to ground. So possibly the VCIM is okay, no big deal. We'll you know resolder these wires, uh, twist them back together, whatever. Um, not too worried about that for now. Let's just get this car running. So actually auto ID now, I'm just starting from scratch again. Let's see if anything changes. Our security light is on. It says engine power reduced. Change oil soon. I'm tempted to just put the original computer back in. And that TCM, if it's offline, then, well, it's kind of important. Yep, it's still offline. Oh, and by the way, we still can't talk to our power steering control module. Control module communication bus off. Okay, we might have to get a scope to get back on this can, but we restored communication with the engine computer. Okay. Ah, lost communication with steering control system, lost communication with transmission control system, Control area, CAN bus communication. Okay, so we do need a scope because, let's see here. 
this 1.6 volts on pin 14 and 1.8 volts on pin 6 there's likely still is a problem so I have a feeling this car is going to be pretty expensive to restore because we have at least one module that's bad already. There could be more. Okay, so two channels, pin six and 14. Let's turn the key on and see what happens. Oh uh, yeah, not great, but that's pretty cool that the car can still talk on this. So let's reduce the time base. So what does that look like to you guys? I think there's still a module that's pulling this bias voltage down. So you can see that looks pretty good. That's about two and a half volts right there. But see the bias voltage is dropping to 1.6 just like our voltmeter is showing So That's what we have right now um, I'm tempted to plug in the original ECM see what happens uh, Possibly plug in the original BCM see what happens um, our TCM is offline our power steering is offline <laughs> I mean it's just, just have to kind of Do an experiment and see what happens to your data and then keep going well, I plugged the original ECM in, and this is looking really, really bad. Hmm. Let's back out. I'm sure the car will not crank. Do system scan one more time. Nope, can't talk to the ECM. It's junk. I think all the networks on the high speed can might have been fried. Whoa, man, that's not good. <laughs> Let's see if we can talk to the VCIM. It might be connected to the low speed bus as well. Yep, that's still online. It's not setting any codes either. You can cut that network right off and it'll be totally cool. <sighs> not good. Well, I mean, to get this car to run, we need the, at least the TCM, I would think, so it knows if it's in park or neutral. You know, it does crank. That's not. Uh, unfortunate for the owner. This was a bad, unfortunate accident here. So I'll save this. This is with the old ECM. All right. So I did the same bypass of the transmission controller as I did with the EBCM so the tan wires and the um, tan and black wires basically eliminated the module see if the can looks any better so on the scope <clears throat> let's see let's zoom out it's starting to look pretty good I would say not ideal. There's still something to worry about here. So we're going from two and a half to three and a half. That's good. From on the red trace, we're going down to 1.1 or one and a half there. So right here, there's a module that's pulling the bias down a bit. Sorry about the glare. And right here, these are good 
clean messages. So right there, boom. Um, it could be the power steering control module, which is offline. And we still haven't gotten there yet. So right now we know bad EBCM, bad TCM. They already replaced the ECM. And the ECM is now setting uh, two codes. CKP position system not learned and ignition one switch circuit two. So we can look that up, see what's going on there. Um, and it cranks, but doesn't start. So let's do key off, key on. See the check engine lights on. This, the security indicator actually went away. So perhaps if we fix this, we can get the car to start. Now, will we be able to shift into gear? Probably not. I mean, maybe it'll be in some default limp mode. So right now the goal is to A, get the car started, B, get the car moving, C, give the customer an estimate of what it take would take to get it perfect. <laughs> um, so kind of one step at a time. So a lot of modules got fried in this incident, unfortunately. All right, looking up this code P1682, it says there are two ignition voltage circuits supplied to the engine control module. First ignition circuit is provided by the engine control's ignition relay or powertrain relay through a fuse. This ignition voltage circuit supplies power to the all internal ECM circuits associated with the throttle control operation. Uh, second ignition voltage is supplied by the run crank relay through a fuse used to power the remaining internal ECM components. If there are differences between these two voltages, this code will set. So, <clears throat> engine data. I see engine EC ignition relay command on and relay feedback signal is 0 0.5 volts. I don't think that's correct. Uh, if we go to our ECM powers and grounds diagram, you'll see that this powertrain relay, once it's commanded on, you should obviously have 12 volts at, you know, at these fuses, PCM, ECM, injector, exhaust, BCM2. And then the other power feed comes from this ECM trans fuse 43 in run and crank. So those two have to be powered on and that's not the case. So this relay feedback signal is 0 0.5 volts. We keep scrolling, ignition one signal is 13.3 volts. So if I shut the key off, that goes to zero. Accessory on 13.3, so ignition one is good. Key off again. That turns off, we're at 0 0.5 volts. Turn the key on, still at 0 0.5 volts. If I crank it, zero volts. That's not good. So let's check for power at the PCM ECM fuse with the key on and see if this relay is closing. All right, let's look at the fuse box here. So I see PCM ECM fuse 20 amp is right here. That's this yellow one, and you definitely want to check your test light that it works. Nothing on that pin, nothing on this pin, nothing on this pin, nothing on this pin. So it's commanding the relay on, but the relay is not turning on. Okay, where is this powertrain relay? There's a run crank relay in this corner, that's this one. Powertrain relay, it's this one. Now, if you kind of look close, the legs aren't really all the way down. Is this relay, has, yeah, I'm sure someone's been, oh. oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, place your bets now. Look, 13.4 volts on that feedback circuit. So key off, key on. Ooh, promising, promising. Someone's playing with the horses over there. The first time I've had a crank. 
<laughs> we're, we're making progress. First was a no crank, then a crank no start. Now it's a crank start stall. I think your horses are more reliable. They're, they're pretty much crank. They, they look very, very relaxed. That's that's adorable. <laughs> let's let's try that again. <laughs> All right. So we're on the right track here. Keep in mind the uh, transmission controller is disconnected, the ABS controller is disconnected, but this engine should still run, I would think. Now, is our fuel level gauge back online? I think so. <sighs> Map sensor circuit high voltage. That will definitely, that, that's a problem. Let's clear them out. Okay. Okay, so two codes, map sensor, circuit high voltage. We can look at that data PID. Engine data. Let's intake air. Ignition one signal, mass airflow, map sensor. position okay so map sensor right now is 16.68 psi uh, there's no way you could that could be right let's see let's crank it Okay, it's definitely in limp mode of some sort. But hey, it starts and runs. It starts and runs very poorly. It sounds it sounds terrible. It's stuff shooting out of the tailpipe. Oh, birds? <laughs> it's feathers. <laughs> Maybe that's why the manifold absolute pressure is really high. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I wonder how, how long this car has been sitting. Let, let's rev it up, see, see if more shoots out. Ready? <laughs> Very interesting. 13.9 on the map sensor. I don't know why that signal dropped. I'm just going to start it one more time. That seems better. Definitely not happy. Now you hear that misfire. That could be because it's in limp mode. Uh, I'm going to pop off the air box and see if there's like a mouse nest in there and I don't know. Read fault code. So CKP system not learned. Minimum throttle position not learned. That's interesting. That could be part of the problem. Map sensor circuit high. Last test passed. Okay. All right, so looking at the air cleaner, I don't see any mouse nests. That looks clean in there. Nothing to see there. And the throttle body. That looks pretty clean. The O-ring's in one piece. seems to be okay. 
um, this map sensor um, I jiggled it and it's definitely not installed there's supposed to be a bolt holding it in I assume of some sort I think Is that an aftermarket piece of garbage or not? Uh, see, there's a bolt, a hole, nothing in it. I jiggled it, and then the signal came back to normal. So, not exactly sure. Let me. I guess I can clean the throttle body. Reattach the map sensor. I want. I just want this car to run. All right. So I don't see or hear the throttle body moving whatsoever. So let's just start from scratch again. Okay, key off. Key on. Okay, I have the air pipe disconnected. Minimal throttle position not learned. Last test failed. Current. 2176. It's not setting circuit faults for this throttle body. Let's look up 2176. So, right now, we're in engine power reduced. Okay. I'm going to try this throttle sweep bidirectional control in the scanner. And nothing is happening, even though there are no circuit codes. It's like this throttle is dead. No throttle body activation. key on. So on scan data what I'm seeing is the throttle position sensors are both fine. So sensor 1 indicated and sensor 2 indicated 0%. You can see the voltages right there. Sensor 1 voltage 3.2 goes up to 4.3 and down to 0.5 Sensor 2 is also working, so it's not setting any TPS codes, but this throttle body is just inactive. So again, is this ECM, even though it's online, it's talking, it starts and runs the car, is it able to control this throttle body? Or is the throttle body, was that damaged by the welding incident? That's a whole separate diagnosis. So, I think we're gonna have to wrap this up here. And you know, the customer's bill is already probably three hours of diagnostics here. And we, well, we got the car started, yes. But, oh no, it's a no com. Oh, what do we do? So I just talked to the owner of the Chevy Cobalt, kind of gave him the bad news. I'm like, well, I got it running and it moves, but that's about as good as it's going to get without replacing every single module on this high speed network. That's power steering. He already replaced the BCM. 
VCIM, the OnStar you could live without. The EBCM needs to be replaced and programmed. Transmission controller needs to be replaced and programmed. And the engine control module, it's not controlling the throttle, so it's probably a bad eBay unit. So that needs to be replaced and reprogrammed. Um, you know, he's already three hours in for diagnostics. And I told him, you know, at the end of the day, even if we get this car back on the road, it's still going to be a rusty beater that smells like mouse urine and has, like, things shooting out of the tailpipe. So he's like, yeah, it sounds like it's the end of the road for this cobalt. Um, so that's where we are. At least the customer got a conclusive, you know, diagnosis out of this. And, um, yeah, we got some... Decent video footage on testing the uh, high-speed network and determining if your modules are fried. And if one is fried, chances are the other ones on the network are also destroyed. So thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.